Another Monday, and that means another Golden Eagles sports report. Hi, I'm Caroline Kernan. And I'm Dan Abington. Over the weekend, the Marquette women's volleyball team played two matches. The Golden Eagles won in three straight sets against both the Georgetown Hoyas and the Villanova Wildcats. Our own Jack Phillips was on hand to recap the weekend for us. The lucky number this weekend for the Marquette Golden Eagles was six as Marquette swept both the Georgetown Hoyas and the Villanova Wildcats here in the Al McGuire Center, three straight sets apiece. We did. We only got one block. Uh, in the first, I think our serving made it pretty easy to play defense. I thought we served it great. Uh, there was times we made some good plays. I thought Martha made a couple of spectacular plays. We had a couple of overhand digs, which we've been working on. Uh, so we made, we made some plays. The first game of the weekend was a win against Georgetown, where the Golden Eagles finished the Hoyas off in three straight sets. Richard senior Jenna Rosenthal totaled six kills on the night and was a key piece in Market's win. Um, I think we did a really good job um, serving Georgetown out of system, so it actually makes blocking quite a lot easier when um, bad passes mean uh, fewer options for them. And I think we did a really good job of containing um, Speech. She's one of their highest high-level players, high-level in the con conference. We were able to keep her efficiency pretty low tonight. For 20. And it's going to end on a service error. Next up for the Golden Eagles were the Wildcats of Villanova, where Marquette swept them right off of their home court, also winning that game in three straight sets. Senior Anna Hawk also finished with six kills and helped propel the Golden Eagles to 3-1 and one in Big East play. I think overall we, did, we had a pretty good game. There was definitely some up and ups and downs. And First game we started off strong and we, had, we were pretty good at a lot of things. And then second we were not as good at those same things that we were good at in the first. And then, yeah, we hit pretty well. We were pretty good offensively and I think we had pretty good serving too. Olsenowski serves. And who else but Jenna Rosenthal to close it out? Allie Weber notched her 1,000th career kill last night, and overall she had a dominant weekend performance, totaling 28 kills. Head coach Ryan Tice will look to take the momentum of both Barber and the squad into their next matchup against Xavier. That game is set for this Wednesday at the Al, starting at 11.30 in the morning. Look at Xavier. We actually, oddly enough, haven't really seen Xavier at all. You know, when we watched Villanova, for example, we see St. John's. When we watch Georgetown, we see some Seton Hall. Um, we haven't even seen any Xavier yet, so that'll be starting tonight. All right. Reporting live from the Al McGuire Center, I'm Jack Phillips, Marquette Wire Sports. Jenna Rosenthal also became Marquette's all-time leader in assisted blocks in the team's win over Georgetown. Here's what she had to say on her impressive achievement. I think it's really exciting, but um, I think the really important thing of that title is assisted blocks. Um, that record doesn't come without teammates, and um, having my pin blockers, Hope, Anna, Allie, setting up for me, doing good stuff, Madeline too, so it comes from them. Some insight on women's volleyball, we now want to welcome in one of our volleyball analysts. Let's send it over to the locker room, where Dan has more with Zoe Comerford. Thanks, Caroline. Well, Zoe, Friday night was utter domination for the Golden Eagles as Georgetown trailed by five or more points in each set in their 3-0 to zero loss at the Al McGuire Center. So what allowed Marquette to have such a dominating performance in that one? So Marquette really didn't let Georgetown into the game in any aspects of the game. So their service aces, they had seven service aces in that game, and then against Villanova Saturday, they had 12. So they did really well on the serving. They were very confident. And then also, Simone Speech, she's one of the top 10 big hitters in the conference, and they limited her to only four kills. So that's very, very impressive for Marquette's defense. Yeah, it's not easy to hold one of the best players in the Big East to such a small game, but the Golden Eagles were able to do it. It's definitely not. So just 24 hours later, Marquette won again in three straight sets, this time against the Villanova Wildcats, and Ali Barber notched her 1,000th career kill in that one. So Zoe, with Rosenthal and Barber both grasping these impressive accolades, what do they mean for this team as a whole? It definitely helps the team. So when you have Rosenthal and Barber getting these accolades, and then also on Saturday they got tw uh, 15, 15 kills each, which is very, very impressive for those outside for those hitters. So with that, and then also other players on the team like Martha Kanavadov, who had a match high 17 digs. When you have all of that working towards your favor, you're gonna win those games. And their match experience in the Big East has to help the team out. For sure. And Marquette, even in service aces, they had seven service aces in the first set against Villanova. So they are now leading the Big East in service aces with 2.08 service aces per set. So they're very confident on all parts of their game. And Marquette's a relatively young team with a couple sophomores in their starting lineup. So having experience like that out on the floor really helps them out. For sure. 
So Marquette now looks ahead to a matchup with the Xavier Musketeers. That game is set for this Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. at the Owl. What do the Golden Eagles need to do in order to keep their momentum going into Big East play? You know, Dan, I definitely think they have that momentum. They just swept Georgetown, Villanova in straight sets, and then they also are second in the Big East. They have a 3-1 and one Big East record, and they are just coming off a of two big wins. So I think they're going to win against Xavier. It's really, they need to, if they have a lead, they can't let it up. They have to stay strong mentally and physically, and then they also really need to keep strong in their service aces. They've been doing fantastic serving, so if they keep that up, as well as do good on the digs and blocks, they're going to have a fantastic game against Xavier. Any players you see having a big uh, day against Xavier? I definitely think Martha Kanavadoff will, again. She's had a great couple of games, obviously, against Villanova and Georgetown. So I think she's gotten some saves that I didn't even think she was going to get. So it's very impressive seeing her all around the court. So I definitely think she's going to be a big key player in that matchup. All right, thank you very much, Zoe. So with that, let's send it back over to Caroline. Thanks, Dan. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk some men and women's soccer, so don't go anywhere because the Golden Eagle Sports Report will be right back. Welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Once again, I'm Caroline Kernan. And I'm Dan Abington. Marquette women's soccer split their two matches this past week, losing a close one to Villanova 3-2 and winning at home against St. John's 1-0. We spoke with Coach Roeders after his team's first Big East win of the season. Oh, it feels great. It's been trying. You know, we've, we've, we've had some trying times and, uh, you know, here you are. Got another home game. Um, you know, you're playing an opponent that you know it's going to be difficult to play against. You know, Ian always has his, has his team ready to play. And, you know, I, I again felt like we started a little bit slow coming out of the gate. But then we kind of like worked our way into the game more and more. And, uh, you know, I thought really from about halfway through the first half and then into the second half, um, you know, we, have a, we had a lot of momentum going. I was really excited, especially because usually like I don't get as many minutes. So for me, this was like a big opportunity, I guess, to go out and like show that. We really needed this win too, especially for like the standards. So now we're setting our standards pretty high. <laughs> Listen, winning, winning is not easy, uh, and it is about winning. And so to get the result today, to get a shutout, um, you know, I thought we had a great finish, Bombacino, uh, who's who's really been playing terrific. I thought she had a terrific game today. Um, it feels really good. Now joining Caroline in the locker room, we welcome in one of our women's soccer analysts, Amy Galaszewski. 
Hey, me. Thanks for being here. So the Golden Eagles have had a pretty lopsided season thus far. Looking back at the game at Villanova, what went what went wrong overall, and how are they able to bounce back against St. John's? I think it all started at the beginning of the game. The Golden Eagles came off to a pretty rough start. Um, Villanova was definitely outplaying them the first half. They automatically had three goals right away in the first half, which caused them to have a little less confidence going into the second half. But then they did end up coming back with two goals. The second one was from Alyssa Bamacino in the 75th minute. So I think they need to work on taking shots a lot and then starting strong earlier. And they definitely did that in the game against St. John's. They ended up taking 19 shots. Again, the winning goal was from Alyssa Bamacino in the 78th minute. She is on fire. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if they start strong from the beginning and take shots and not only take them but execute them get them in the back of the net they should be set for the rest of the season and so with that uh finally the golden eagles now look ahead to their game against the DePaul blue demons at the valley that game is set for this thursday night what does marquette have to do in order to stay on track and pick up their second big east win well now they have their first big east win and Alyssa bambacino is the big east freshman of the week so that should give them some confidence going into this game I think what they're going to have to do mostly in the game against them is watch out for the senior powerhouse, Madeline Frick. She's their top scorer right now. So the, de the defense piles down on her, and we also keep taking shots. I think we can come out with a win against them. Awesome. And just one last question. For the Golden Eagles, who would you say would be a key player for this upcoming game? Definitely Bambasino. She's yeah. on fire right now. I can see her striving further for the rest of the season. Awesome. Thank you so much for your insight. And now we're going to move it over to men's soccer. Uh, Marquette was defeated by the Wisconsin Badgers at Valley Fields last Wednesday. The final score was 1-0, and our own Chris Reisner was there to recap the action. Four, three, two, one. The Marquette men's soccer team fell to in-state rival Wisconsin in a close-knit 1-0 affair. I mean, the game wasn't uh, a great spectacle. Uh, I think... Um, you know, whenever you play Madison, it's contrasting styles, and they do what they do pretty well. You know, they were uh, they put a cover over you and stop you from doing the things you wanted to do, and then we bre and then they break. I thought we handled their break really well. I think we we thwarted them, and then we had one mistake, and then they uh, they managed to you know make us pay for it. As you mentioned, a slide tackle inside the box, and now Wisconsin gets a chance. Akindeli shoots. And he scores. Quick move from Wisconsin. You know, it's one of those games, if you're not a soccer fan, you probably think it's like watching paint dry. But for us, it's always a, it, it is a game of chess when we play Madison. And, you know, props and respect, you know. They, they, they do have a style and they play a certain way, and that's the way they play. We just wanted to come out with the hardest work rate we could and uh, increase our win rate from this season. But obviously it didn't work out. and. We tried to keep pushing the whole game, especially once we went down, but we just wanted to get that first one in, and obviously we couldn't, so that's obviously disappointing, but uh, we have more games to look forward to, especially this weekend with Georgetown. From Valley Fields, Chris Reisner, Marquette Wire Sports. Just three days later, the Golden Eagles faced off against the Hoyas from Georgetown. After 90 minutes and two extra periods, the game remained scoreless, and both teams walked away with a draw. Our own John Steffi was on hand to recap the action. For Marquette head coach Louis Bennett, a tie against Georgetown was as much as he could ask for. I'm happy that we got a point from it. The reason for that joy? Marquette played a man down for the last 58 minutes, yet played to a 0-0 tie. We we had to we had to pack it in in our half and just defend the entire the entire time and uh, just create the chances that we could create at that point, you know? But there weren't many opportunities to create. No Marquette player finished with more than three shots. The Hoyas had a 12-11 shot advantage and controlled possession for much of the second half. When, when, when numerically we're not gonna have a superiority, or rarely will we have superiority, then you can't really play possession because you're always going to be a man down. Or if you do play possession, it has to be quickly and we have to probably play uh, in space behind players. And now Marquette has gone scoreless for almost 300 minutes. We need to keep 11 people on the field. Simple as that. I cannot tell you we wouldn't have scored if we had 11 people on the field. Reporting from Valley Fields, I'm John Steppy. 
Mark at Wire Sports. Now joining Dan in the locker room, we want to welcome in our next guest, Nick Galley. Nick is a contributing analyst for the men's so soccer team. Thanks, Caroline. And first of all, Nick, it seems like the boys were not really on their game this past mm -hmm. week. What did you see that went wrong for the Golden Eagles? Yeah, Dan, I mean, it's really just been an offensive problem this past week uh, for Marquette. They just aren't scoring goals at all. They've scored only one goal in their past four games, and in the last three, they've been shut out. And it's been a tale of two seasons for Marquette this season. First five games, they scored eight goals, and in the second five games, they've only scored four goals. 75% wow. of the goals scored this season have been scored by upperclassmen. So there hasn't really been a merging of younger talent and older talent. It's kind of just been very steady the whole year. So that's been a big issue, and as I said, they just aren't putting the ball in the back of the net. You know, there's been a lot of negatives, but going back to that game against Georgetown where they tied, they're coming off that game, obviously. Uh, Coach Bennett said that there was a lot of positives to look for in that one. They, had, they were playing a man down for the last 58 minutes, uh, so they had their backs against the wall. Coach Bennett said that they did play with a lot of heart and determination, and they did show a spark. So that was nice to see for a team that had not been doing good over those past three games. They were coming off a three-game losing skid mm -hmm. going into that Georgetown game. So definitely good to see that they have something to build on. Yeah, good to find a positive out of a, mm -hmm. lot, of, a lot of negatives. So the Golden Eagles have changed formations a lot in the past couple of games. Do you think that that kind of shakeup in their starting lineup has changed anything for the team? I think it has. It's been getting more guys involved. That was a big thing we talked about last week, mm -hmm. too. Getting more guys involved, especially the young guys. And we did see some of that. Josh Hancock filling in the other night uh, for the Golden Eagles against Georgetown. So that was good to see. Um, and you need to change something up mm -hmm. because what you have right now isn't working that well. So. As the season comes to wrap up, it's nice to see that they have something to build off maybe for next year because this season didn't really turn out how they wanted it to. And against Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, Coach put in Cedric Stern instead of Luis Barata at the goaltender. Do you think that was a strategic decision to try to get Stern a couple more minutes, or do you think there was some kind of underlying reason why Barata didn't play? I mean, I definitely think it was a strategic decision because coming into that game against Wisconsin, uh, you know, they, they weren't doing that well. I believe they were... Um, just coming off the loss against UWM mm -hmm. as well. And then they were also shut out early before that. So I think just trying to get a new look for guys, a new look for opponents as well, maybe just mix something up, try and get a new strategy in there. Yeah, definitely. So now Marquette heads east for a matchup against the Providence Friars. Mm -hmm. That game is set for this Saturday afternoon. Nick, what are your expectations from the Golden Eagles? Dan, I do not have high expectations for <laughs> this game at all. It is not good. But historically, Marquette has not beaten uh, the Providence Friars since 2013. And since then, they're 0-2-2, two two, so they have a couple ties, but no wins. And if you really want to get deep into the stats here, I mean, take this with a grain of salt, but when Marquette heads out east into the eastern time zone, uh, since 2013, they are 4-16-4. and four. That is a win percentage of 17%. Wow. So certainly all odds are against Marquette for this game Saturday. And also, Providence has been playing good soccer. They're third in the Big East right now, right behind Creighton and St. John's. And then they've also won their last two games, and they're looking to make it three straight tomorrow against UConn. So if Providence does get that third straight win, it's going to be even tougher for Marquette. But we'll see what they can do against the Friars on Saturday. That's a really interesting stat about Marquette struggling on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And it's a team that really doesn't do well on the road in yeah, general. Yeah, exactly. 0-3 this season on the road. Um, so it's been tough for them. Hopefully they can change the tides a little bit when they head out to Providence. So do you think there are any key players uh, that Marquette has to have uh, clicking in this game against Providence? Yeah, I think Patrick Segrist is going to really have to lead this team. He's been the leader all year, um, one of their top goal scorers, obviously. And, you know, you talk about those young guys getting implemented into the uh, lineup. Well, you're going to need to have someone to look up to. Mm -hmm. Segrist is that guy. Look for him to be big in this Providence game. What are your overall things that you think Marquette needs to improve on heading into this Providence game? I mean, the big thing, Dan, is just is striking first. I can't stress that enough. In any sport, you want to get ahead, whether it's football, soccer, baseball, you want to get ahead. And Marquette has not been able to do that. They're going to need to do that. You know, get that culture going right now because a lot of young guys are looking up. Uh, I know we have a segment later on the show where we have these international players. So it's all about communication. And you want to get communication going, striking early, and then it'll just help the, the team chemistry as well. So, And do you think the fact that Marquette runs such a kind of deep rotation has anything to do with it? Like, it's not their star players that are getting all the time like some other teams. They work in a lot of younger guys off the bench. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Yeah, I think working the younger guys off the bench is definitely beneficial. 
Uh, I know I mentioned that they want to get some, some stuff going for next season. This season, you know, I don't know where we're going to go with it. But you want to get something, you know, going in the right direction. Get these young guys really implemented into the lineup and see what you can do from there. All right, great stuff as always, Thank Nick. You. Looking forward to hearing from you again. So we'll send it back to you now, Caroline. Thanks, guys. Coming up next, we'll be discussing an assortment of topics, including everything Marquette basketball and men's golf. So don't change the channel because the Golden Eagle Sports Report will be right back. On September 20th, the Marquette basketball family lost one of its members, former player Gregory Pope Johnson. He played under coach Al McGuire from 1971 to 19, 1975, including the 1974 national runner-up team. Pope was known for his spirituality and his love of jazz music. He was 65. To help cover the cost of his memorial, you can visit Pope's GoFundMe page. In other Marquette basketball news, the season is almost here. The men's team plays its first game on November 6th when they host UMBC at the new Pfizer Forum. However, you don't have to wait until then to get a look at this year's team, so come out to the Al McGuire Center this Friday night for Marquette Madness to get a sneak peek at both the men and the women's teams. The event starts at 9 p.m. and it will be followed by a special concert from Grammy Award winning artist B.O.B. So with the season right around the corner, you may want to get your season tickets. If you were looking to get them for free, you may have tried your luck with a half-court shot last Tuesday. The men's team had a contest outside the AMU where fans got one opportunity to make a basket for free season tickets. Dan, did you shoot your shot? Well, Caroline, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it out that day. Uh, but I have been working on my jump shot a little bit, working on my mechanics and half-court shot at the uh, Straz Gym. So I, I definitely could have given them a run for their money. Oh, yeah. But it's really great to see this team having some fun with the fans nonetheless. So now shifting over to the women's basketball team, head coach Carolyn Keeger just landed a new recruit for the 2019-20 season. Cameron Taylor of Peoria, Illinois announced her commitment to the Golden Eagles via Twitter on Saturday. And the 6'2 forward averaged 11 points and 8 rebounds per game as a junior while leading Richwood High School to the Class 3A state title. A quick update for Marquette men's golf. The team entered the Marquette Intercollegiate at Aaron Hills just a couple of strokes behind Northwestern. After round two, the team finished with a score of 14 over par. Play is currently suspended due to lightning storms, but will resume tomorrow. So now, before we wrap up the show, this year's men's soccer team features players from a multitude of different countries. How does that affect communication on the team? With more on that, let's send it over to Caroline and Shane Hogan for tonight's edition of Down to the Wire. So 
Thank you for being here, Shane. Thanks, Dan. Uh, it's good to have you here. So our own men's soccer reporter, Tyler Peters, wrote a fascinating piece on the men's soccer team. Tyler was unfortunately able to be here, so thanks for coming out. Can you tell us a little bit about the article? Yeah, first I just want to give a quick shout out to Tyler Peters. Wrote a really nice story uh, for the paper this for this week, so I just want to give him some credit. Uh, but in that article, he really touched on some really nice things and got a lot of great perspective from Coach Bennett. And um, when it comes to these international players, there's seven of them on the 28-man roster. So about so a fourth of the team made up of international players. And what this whole thing is really about is the communication and how they've had to kind of build their strategies with a lot of different languages being spoken on the team. And Coach Bennett used some words uh, like sp uh, they've got spice, diversity, and perspective. And I think the one that really stands out to me is perspective. I mean, they're trying to build a culture, even though a lot of these guys don't speak the same language. So I think, I think that says a lot about the program right now. So with that being said, head, head coach Louis Bennett is always full of colorful sayings. And in, the, in this article, it says that players may not all speak the same native language, but they speak Marquette. What exactly does he mean by that? Yeah, I think that's a great quote, first off. And, and it, again, shows where this program is really heading. They're building a culture, a Marquette culture. And for Marquette, they haven't had the ability, like a lot of teams they faced, where they've had players coming from MLS academies, where teams have been able to really build communication strategies with playing in those certain academies. So all of their you know, strategies and stuff like that are very similar. For Marquette, they've kind of had to do that on the fly, and that's what they've done in their non-conference schedule so far. And a lot that they've had to do is use nonverbal communication. And so when they're on the field, off the field, whatever they can do to build Marquette language, they've done. And right now, I think it's working out. Awesome. Bennett also described how different communication was um, between players back in his playing days. How beneficial do you think modern communication is for today's players on and off the field? Yeah, when Coach Bennett came over from the UK when he was playing soccer, uh, he said they only had one call per week. Think about the difference where we are as society today. Players have the ability to call their friends, call their family whenever they have the chance to, thanks to modern technology. And I think that is really beneficial. They can feel more comfortable, they can feel more at home, even if they're across the ocean right now. So I think um, modern technology has done a lot of good things for a lot of different people, especially for players that are playing here um, in a different country. Awesome, thank you so much, Shane. Awesome stuff. And with that, let's send it back to Dan. Great job, Carolina Shane, as always. That just about wraps things up for us tonight on Golden Eagle Sports Report. You can catch us every Monday night at 7 p.m. on marquettewire.org. So from our co-anchor, Caroline Kernan, I'm Dan Abington. Good night, Marquette.